Simply mentioning a classic film will cause us to think of a specific moment. If I were to say, mention Jaws, or Planet of the Apes, or The Sound of Music, or The Exorcist, or Psycho. However, though I agree that this scene is masterfully executed, no pun intended there, I feel as though the effect that it's had on popular culture often overshadows the film itself. You don't need to have seen Psycho to know what this is. As weird as this might sound, do we not sometimes forget that there is an entire film around this scene? A film that gives this scene the context and build-up for it to have become so iconic in the first place. So whilst I'm in no way dismissing or even criticising the shower scene, I want to take this opportunity to talk about the film around it, and how even 58 years later, Psycho remains a relentless, tense and unnerving horror film in spite of the shower scene. Psycho is a film that I would describe as relentless. The second it starts, you are assaulted by violent strings and intersecting lines. Like the stabbing of a knife, the violin is played with such aggression that it's almost piercing. It's aggressive yet rhythmic. As well, the visuals by graphic designer Saul Bass feature clean, contrasting lines which violently slice through each other. Now debatably, and from my point of view, the most effective element in Psycho is the performance from Anthony Perkins as Norman Bates. Fear of the unknown is too broad of a term here. His performance creates an air of... uncertainty. There's a real, almost uncanny quality to Norman that at once shows him as vulnerable, anxious, abused and manipulated. Yet one mention of his mother, and his face and tone change to something far more defensive, sinister. We all go a little mad sometimes. That effortless shift between the two creates that feeling of uneasiness, a conflicting dissonance between wanting to help and wanting to escape. And the casting of Perkins was a deliberate choice for this. To garner sympathy for Norman Bates, Hitchcock chose Anthony Perkins, known for his portrayal of sensitive men. Incidentally, this scene features some wonderful direction, such as this low-angle shot of Norman, and a taxidermied hawk, a bird of prey, hovering over Norman, looming, watching, and moving. By this time, films in colour were becoming increasingly ubiquitous, even within Hitchcock's own filmography. Prior to Psycho, Hitchcock released North by Northwest and Vertigo, the latter of which is famous specifically for its use of colour. And yet, Psycho is monochrome. Now, it was Hitchcock's decision to shoot in black and white for fear that the amount of bloody violence might have been too shocking otherwise. Plus, and more pragmatically, filming it in black and white is a lot cheaper. And yet, the monochrome of Psycho is used so effectively. There's less a restriction of the times, and more of a deliberate stylistic choice. The high contrast allows for complex interplay between light and dark and stunning silhouettes, such as the house, a looming black shape, ever-present, ominous, an almost monolithic entity. And the image of that house, of mother in the window, is what comes to mind whenever I think of Psycho. Despite the impact the shower scene has had, it is only as effective as it is because of the filmmaking that contextualises it. Every aspect works to create a sense of unease, from a leering customer, to a piercing soundtrack, and an unstable performance. It all comes together around the shower scene to create one of the most highly regarded and influential films of all time. Mm. 